What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, episodes of the great debaters, and my commentaries on the 1st to 15th and other things as they pop up. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And if you haven't already, please join. That button is right down there. And that gives you three tiers and three different ways that you could help Unique Access and support us on a monthly basis. So please consider joining. If you can, you know, the tiers start at $199 and and go up from there. But we would really appreciate it. And it definitely helps the cause and enables me to uh, slide some money to the good people that help me here on Unique Access Entertainment. Now, today we have the honor and privilege of bringing Slug back, but also being joined by Ant, collectively of Atmosphere. So thanks for coming through, guys. But first and foremost, I'm always intrigued when uh, we have interesting album titles, but then also that they're not song titles that are on the album. So how, when and why do you guys decide to do it that way sometimes and do it that way in particular with so many other realities exist simultaneously? That's a good question. That's a great question. And and uh, um, there's really no like science, man. I won't be like, oh, we have to, there has to be a song, a song title that's also the album title, or either or a self title, or a, or a correlating. You know, I do like um, I like Easter eggs. I'm a, I'm a, I'm fond of that, and I like doing that everywhere that I can, just because it gets me off. It's like I laugh at that. I think that kind of stuff is like funny. You know what I mean? And so I like to I like to I like to connect all kinds of things, but I also like dad jokes. And a lot of times, a lot of the stuff comes from a space that's kind of like the kitschy, corny joke world. But how does that actually apply to what we're doing? Because a lot of the music we make can can tend to be heavy sometimes, you know. And so it's like, how do we walk in these different planes at the same time? Which, funny enough, works with this particular album title, you know? Yeah, and like we had talked about Slug with the sex packets when they have do what you like, grab them in the biscuits, and then on Humpty Dance, grab them in the biscuits. It's like mm-hmm. if you know like that, you can put that puzzle together, it adds that other level of appreciation and uh, I'd say depth to the artistry, but also to the fan experience. Um, and also it, it uh very different uh, topic-wise, but I also, it took me back to a... Um, you know, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back in the sense that it's this long sentence that's like, or this long phrase of like, Mm -hmm. okay, this is a catchy title and such uh, that carries a lot of heft to it, I'd say, both from a definition, but then also the the subtext of the album. So given uh, that you guys have done that a lot over the years with a lot of heavy subject matter, do you guys find that the fans or your reaction, or even as you guys reflect or talk with other artists that you work with, do they gravitate toward these longer titles? Do they care? Do like who tends to care the most or the least, or how does that work? I probably care more than anybody else. Cause I don't know, <laughs> you know, I do think, okay, so here's the thing. When I listen to records or when I listen to music, I look for those connections. I look for the artists to do these conceptual kind of binding and and like you even mentioned the digital underground thing i think there's times where i looked at artists and i found easter eggs that they might not have intended to leave or when i also i'm glad you brought the public enemy record like the way that album title rings out it kind of tells you what you're in for here it's not like oh this is a artsy title or this is you know like a painting, man. We, people title their paintings, and so sometimes you can look at the at how a certain artist uses titles to see and understand how that artist perceives their own work. It's like that's almost the the the, the self portrait inside of their their painting, you know. And so I think that that probably extends to a lot of us, you know. I think I think that that you know because the funny thing is you you ask a lot of MCs. Let's just go straight to that. You know, why do you how do you come up with your titles? do you take your title serious? And I think a lot of them do, you know, it's just like, it's like, because you take your, you take your art serious. And so, you know, I, but I also see the importance of not overthinking and and, and trying to have a good time. And, and so I try to apply all of that, you know, so maybe the album title will be all this, all these words strung together. And then the song titles will all be like one word song titles, just like, you know, or, or something, you know, I, I, 
I just like to do, I, I just like to have fun with it. I think, you know, it always is going to come back to me just saying, man, I just want to laugh. I want to laugh more. <laughs> so I do things that to, 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 to get that, you know? Slug on uh, event tide, the focus on the hyphens and the negative and, and all that stuff. That was one of those interesting visual things to point out or to notice. That's one of my favorite Im images on the song because it's a, uh, to use another reference from our old school days, it was making me think of, uh, I know you got soul when he start when Rock Kim's like, I start to th think and then I sink into the paper like I was ink. I'm right, when, I'm trapped when I'm right in between lines, I escape when I finish the line, I got soul. Like it somewhat similarly made me think of that in the sense of you could see it and as more of a grammatical writing thing as opposed to here I am on a corner in Queensbridge or something, you know, yep, yep, it was yep. just very different. Yep um yeah okay so then with the with sterling and i was interested uh execution wise with that one the the guitar solo or the guitar that she used it the intro then continues into the first verse whereas uh a lot of times it drops out once the rap starts yeah. so with sterling why did you decide to keep it more consistent through the song than drop it out that's to me it was uh that was more like an aggression kind of thing more of a even something something old school about it and it was also made to be just an interlude you know now when he uh he attacked it the way he did i wasn't really expecting that so i was like oh shit so i didn't even think about it so and you know that's probably more one of my old older ways of making music too i i haven't sampled like that in a long time or at least release. I do it all the time, actually. I mean, but I haven't released anything quite like that in a while. So that I didn't put a whole lot of thought into arrangement with that. You know what I mean? It was just kind. Of, and actually, that's all that was really there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I well, couldn't be, do shit. That's right. <laughs> it, it, cut, it, it cut off where it cuts off. When he gave me that, yeah, track, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it just was, that that length exactly like that. And so I was just like, oh, what would I do with this? And it's funny because once the, the the project was complete, you know, hearing it now, I wish that I would have asked him to extend it and let me do two verses or something. You know what I mean? Even but though then, it's, it's but probably then it would have been. It two yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, it's it's I, I shouldn't say perfect, but it's it's probably it is exactly what it's supposed to be. But yeah, well, that also that also I don't know that, that was supposed to wrap to that. I think that that was kind of possibly going to just be an interlude. We didn't know, you know, but when I took it and was like, oh. I got an idea. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, no, no, I was just saying because also, like with Crop Circles, of course, that's another song that's shorter yep. on so many other realities exist simultaneously. And that's something that people do sometimes, not all the time. So, with so, and with Crop Circles, was that also where the beat ended, or did you intention that one intentionally make it short like that for that same purpose? Yeah. or? Yeah, it was the same purpose. By now, you know, it was like we were going to do a few of those kind of things. It's kind of like from, you know, uh, we uh, we grew up on the idea of these all kinds of songs everywhere, you know, Fear of a Black Planet, what have you, you know. Uh, so that's kind of like what we were kind of aiming for, which I know a lot of people do all kinds of styles of stuff, too. But um, we haven't done it in a while. We hadn't done anything quite like that in a while. Whereas the little things show up real fast and then something, and then we go into something else. At least I hadn't, I, I, you know, that's the feeling we had going into this record. And there's, okay. a, there's, a, there's a handful of those on the record. And, and they could have, the thing about those were, and I remember they could have ended up as instrumental interludes, or it's just that they just happened to turn into whatever it is that they turned into you know what i mean it was like when we saw where the movement was going for the next thing it was always like well what should we do to that now you know and 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 even from a lyrical space it's like i'll I'll look at what he what he sent me or what he brought over and i'll be like okay what should i do to this now and oftentimes you know uh you just your your first idea is right and so when he gives me a beat and there's a structure to it it's not often anymore that I'll be like, Hey, can, let's change this structure. It's like, I, I look at what he's got there and go, how do I apply myself to this? And then just go into it. You know what I mean? And so it's like, 
it's a it's an interesting way for us to operate now it's because it's it's an unspoken evolution that occurred with us um to 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 whereas like you know where it used to be he would give me a beat and i would chop it into pieces and be like i want this to be the verse and i want this to happen you know and then he would be like well and and then we would compromise and figure out where it's at whereas now it's kind of like he's he's bringing me this piece of music that already had time put into it and thought into it and i can go oh okay so let me whoa what am i whoa what am i supposed to do there i don't know let's figure it out you know what i mean like i don't does that answer yeah but when did that when did that uh evolution in your guys relationship when did that start happening or how did it happen i think really it started happening with the halloween record with the day before halloween um and there might be elements of that going on prior to that but not 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 as consciously you know what i'm saying like more more like act, maybe accidentally it would happen that way but but with with the halloween record it was intentionally hey these are pieces and they weren't even meant to be songs per se what would happen if i tried to make raps happen on top of this and then hand it back to him and let him go oh shit let me add some stuff on top of that you know what i mean like it, it was like it, it gave it a different way of being put together and completed that the energy to that was really dope so now it's probably something that'll stay prevalent with us forever maybe not for a whole album or what what have you but just that's going to be a much more prevalent energy because there's no way to unlearn that you know yeah yeah just we'll just continue adding all the things we've learned over and over you know and just try to keep it moving uh and that's that was the whole idea with with the, this record and all our records we really, really do. It, it, maybe the average person probably can't tell. Probably sounds like the same song over and over. Yeah. But I, we consciously are trying to improve on what we do. You know. Well, Con yeah, it's like time. we're we're competing with ourselves. Um, and I don't mean that to all say that that's the only thing we compete with. We compete with life. You know what I'm saying? But but musically, artistically, we're in competition with what we've already done. And so it's like I don't want to. Um, I don't want to overstate that. I don't want to, that, that nobody else, like Aunt said, nobody else might ever notice that we are doing that. But, but to us, that's kind of like one of the challenges. That's one of the obstacles is our self and our prior self. And I think that's just kind of, that's humanity. You know what I'm saying? Or at least that's how I want to view humanity. You know what I'm saying? And so that's in my art too. Well, I, th yeah. I think that's the whole point of what uh, you're getting at with art is that, when you're approaching it from an artistic perspective as opposed to a purely money making operation the i think the the result tends to be different at least from my experience and from what i've seen now being uh, in the game for a long time but that's my things as well but that ties directly into sterling cuz slug in there you were talking about trying to normalize deception and how that works sometimes so um do you remember how or why you started understanding that that's something that people normally do or way things operate normally? I mean, you know, if I'm going to be fully transparent, I'm sure like many of us, you know, my, 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 um, my time on Twitter was very interesting because that was a huge part of what was normalizing the deception, but also what was what was spreading information about the normalization of deception so at the same time you're able to experience fake news or whatever words that, that they that they would choose to call these things but then you're also able to experience what's going on behind the curtain as you curate what you decide to follow and read on social media you know and so it's like to have the duality of that at your fingertips all the time it starts to make you go, okay, so how much of any of that is really real? You know, how much of this is all the, 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 the show, the circus to, to, to have us involved and have us basically working. Everybody's got to work. You know what I'm saying? And I'm watching all of it, just like anybody who probably was, you know, paying too much attention to conspiracy theories when they were a teenager. I, I think that a lot of that, is not just that line but a lot of that is part of what you know i guess i'm kind of talking about with 
the concept of what this album was about or why we chose that title or why the, the, the topics that are going on are going on or why I'm speaking to these things. Cause it's like, it's all part of the, you know, uh, I got I got to believe it's a simulation. I have to believe this is a facade. I have to believe that there's something better out there because, because if we don't believe that, then what are we actually doing with these challenges day to day? What are, you, what are you struggling for? If you don't believe that there's a purpose, if you don't believe that there's something to it, you know, and and, and, and so you, we, we figure out how to paint that as love for life or, or we talk about that as all these different spaces, but really, again, it all comes back down to just a version of hope or a desire for some sort of happiness, you know? But it's like, what does that even mean? What is happiness? What are you chasing? What am I chasing? Like. Do you ever actually get there? Is that actually a place? Or is it a state of mind that balances the unhappiness that you think you are also feeling? And how much of all of that is actually part of the simulation too? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, so. Have you guys seen the movie Nightmare Alley that came out a couple of years ago with the Bradley Coopers, the main I, character? I, I, yeah, I did see that. The circus, yeah. the circus movie? Yep, yep, I did see that. Uh -huh. I don't know that one. It is a Guillermo de, what's oh yeah. I love that yeah, yeah. of course I yeah, love yeah, him yeah, though yeah, yeah. yeah you, you yeah, don't yeah, fuck yeah. around <laughs> like it's probably yeah, super yeah. good then <laughs> well you should you should watch it slug I don't know about you Ant but I thought it was a, a phenomenal movie and it kind of speaks to some of this stuff as well in a different way but similar no I, yeah I enjoyed it for sure yeah I, I liked yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. the thing is too is like from writing these songs I'm allowed to draw and pull from my experience but a lot of my experience is not even something I actually felt. It's also things that I've read. It's also films that I've seen. It's also, you know, my experience is like informed by so much non-reality. So then when you got that and you got news and headlines that are crazier than science fiction films you know what i'm saying it's like there's it's it's like it's a lot and, mm -hmm. and, and and so to me that's all a part of but then i'm able to compartmentalize these ideas into single songs about this more specific topic you know what i'm saying but that topic still exists it's just another fruit hanging from this bigger tree that we're talking about you know with the multiple realities like i'm not really trying to talk about going into the spider verse or nothing here you know what i'm saying it's more just about how every mm -hmm. single entity is having an experience that is different even when we you know co-mingle or or when we when we cross into each other's experiences we're not having the same experience me and you the three of us sitting here talking we're all doing this together but we're all having different experiences so therefore these are all the different realities you know it's like it's bush league Hot, hothead shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not. It's nothing. It's not very deep. It's just. It's just. You know, it's kind of fun to think about. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, smoke well, that's why weed, not? Smoke why not? Weed, listen to the record. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your MTV basketball? Your MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.